Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at a Poulan 4218 chainsaw. The customer complaint is that the choke lever doesn't work. So when we pull out the blue lever, it's supposed to stay out. So we'll have a choke function when we pull on the cord and try to start it. In this case, we're pulling out the blue lever and it's going right back in. So we know something's jacked up with the linkage. You know, especially with pool ends, before I start a repair, I like to look in the cylinder and see what we're dealing with. If it's scored, you know, I'm not going to try and fix the choke. What I'm seeing in there isn't the greatest. But I also know that ch fixing this choke problem is going to be almost no time involved in it. And if there's some life left in that cylinder, then we're going to go ahead and make the repair and warn the customer what we found. And, uh, you know, that the next time it dies, he should probably just consider not bringing it in for repair because it's probably done. So we have a screw here on the throttle linkage that's loose. The linkage on the side of the carb. And uh, I wanted to back it out and put some Loctite on it and then screw it back in there. That would have been the extent of the repair. But I dropped it. And uh, it's hiding. Can't find it. So while he's looking for that screw... Let's talk a little bit about this choke. Now, if I asked you, what does a choke do? Most people would say it richens the fuel mixture and allows a cold engine to start. Okay, well, that is what it does, but why does it do that? Why do we need a richer mixture to start a cold engine? I wonder how many people have given that any thought or know the answer to that question. So basically what's happening is in a normal running engine that's warm, your air fuel mix is entering the engine uh, vaporized or a lot of small droplets. And that's what we need to find its way to the top of the piston and in the combustion chamber to fire to make the engine run. If we're just filling the uh, the combustion chamber with raw fuel, you know, puddles of fuel, not vaporized fuel, or the wrong ratio of fuel to air, then it's not going to run. Let's get caught up on our repair here. It looks like we got some Loctite on that screw. Got it back in place, and the choke seems to work like it should. The lever stays out when I pull on it, and I push it back in and squeeze the trigger, and the fast idle function is working. Right now, we're going to pull the muffler off because it didn't look pretty when I looked inside the cylinder, and I want to get a closer look at that uh, piston skirt and ring on the exhaust port side. So back to our choke function, when the engine's cold, the incoming fuel is condensing and forming bigger droplets. It's not vaporizing or forming smaller droplets. So when we have a cold engine, if we don't choke the uh, yeah. carburetor, and just let the regular air fuel mix come in. A percentage of that mix is going to condense, stick to the walls of the intake and in the crankcase, and the amount of fuel that actually makes it to the combustion chamber is less, less than what we need to run the engine, and maybe condensed and not vaporized. Now, I am explaining this in the most basic terms. Uh, getting technical, first of all, I'm not qualified to get that technical. 
And second, it's really not necessary. Just kind of explaining what's going on so a layman can better understand why we need a choke. So in order to get the right percentage of vaporized fuel above the piston in the combustion chamber, we need to add more fuel. A percentage of it is condensing and sticking to the walls of the inside of the engine, and a percentage of it is making it to where it has to be. In order to get enough up above the piston, we're going to start with more to get our percentage up there, and then it'll fire and run. And as things warm up, uh, we can start cleaning that mixture back out until we get to the uh, proper stoichiometric ratio in the engine to make it run smoothly. We looked at our um, piston and cylinder. They looked a little scratchy. Checking the compression, cold, we're at 145. That's good. Now, just because we have good compression on a cold engine doesn't mean we're not going to have problems because if there is a little bit of light scoring starting on a piston skirt, especially around the ring area, you know, when things start to get hot and expand, they could pinch the ring. And if the ring's pinched, you're going to lose compression. So, this saw doesn't have a lot of life left in it, based on what I saw for scratching in there, not based on the compression number. But the repair is so quick and simple that, you know, we're going to do it. We're going to tell the guy what he has. If he thinks he's going to use this chainsaw three more times in the next 10 years, then it'll last him. But if he's going to go make firewood with it, he's going to have to start thinking about buying a different saw. So we have uh, made our choke repair. We've babbled a little bit about choke function. And... We took a look at the piston and cylinder. The fuel he's got in here, it's not fresh, but I don't think it was affecting the way the saw was running. The problem with fuel that's kind of in between is that as it starts to break down and you're running through the engine, you end up with uh, you end up with gum that like gets in a piston ring grooves and starts to bind things up you know you could be plugging up your spark arrestor screen so it's never a good idea to to run old fuel if you have to get rid of some older fuel maybe you could blend it with some fresh fuel and then put it in your filthy disgusting four-stroke lawnmower or something like that i guess we're going to fire this thing up and see what it does looking at the chain here and I notice on the bar that at some point this thing probably ran a little light on oil you can see the paint is all missing here now just because the paints missing doesn't mean it still has an oiling problem so when we run this thing we're gonna see if it's oiling and if it starts and runs decent and it's oiling then that's all I'm gonna have for you on the pool and 4218 net Need a little bit of Loctite on one of the screws on the carb linkage. Thanks for watching. Later.